Hello, my name is Erin Gregory and I'm a curator at the Canada Aviation and Space Museum. Satellites play an extremely important role in our lives every day. If you've used your bank card to buy your morning coffee, check the forecast, watch television, use the internet or Google Maps today, you've benefited from satellite technology. Satellites have advantages over other modes of transmission. Signals to and from satellites are not obstructed by things like mountains or limited by distance. In fact, a single satellite can cover one third of the Earth's surface. That kind of coverage makes communication possible in remote areas that could not otherwise be reached. When Canada's Alouette 1 was launched on September 29, 1962, we became the third country in space after the Soviet Union and the United States. From that moment up to the present, Canada has developed many areas of particular expertise in space technology, including a proud tradition of excellence in satellites. The early programs like Alouette and the International Satellites for Ionosphere Studies, or ISIS, were largely experimental. Over time, the objective shifted, and by 1967, the focus was on applications rather than scientific experimentation. Because of Canada's vast territories and diverse terrain, the primary focus of the Canadian satellite program was on domestic telecommunications and the monitoring of natural resources. To further these goals, the Canadian government created Telesat Canada Corp in 1969 to operate a domestic commercial satellite system. This marked the beginning of the ANIC family of satellites. ANIC A made Canada the first country in the world to use satellites for domestic communication. The Hermes program of the 1970s led to the most powerful communication satellite at the time and made possible the direct broadcasting of television signals to homes equipped with a small dish. This program also included experiments in telehealth, teleeducation, and community communication. These services are especially important today when we have to keep our distance but need to remain connected more than ever. Beyond communications, satellites allow us to observe the Earth in unprecedented ways. Canada's RadarSat programs collect vast amounts of data on ice, land, oceans, and the atmosphere, helping to monitor the impacts of climate change, manage natural resources, and help support natural disaster relief. When it launched, MDA's RadarSat-2 was the only satellite that could see through the clouds, allowing it to capture images of the Earth 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. RadarSat Constellation, the latest in the RadarSat family, captures 250,000 images every year. Satellites are also used in search and rescue. In 1979, Canada, the United States, France, and the Soviet Union joined together to form COSPIS SARSAT, a satellite-aided search and rescue initiative. A network of satellites detects, locates, and passes on distress signals to nearby SAR teams. Satellites enable global coverage, and this program has helped save tens of thousands of lives. Air traffic control is another area being revolutionized by satellites. NAV Canada, the organization in charge of managing air traffic in this country, is a leader in this initiative. Together with its international partners, NAV co-founded Arion, a system that uses satellites to track aircraft in areas where radar and other land-based surveillance technologies aren't practical or available. That means no matter where an aircraft is flying, be it in the middle of the North Atlantic or over the North Pole, controllers always know its exact location. So I think I've given you a pretty good idea of the many ways satellites make our lives better. Canada started out as a leader in satellite technology and with so many incredible companies in the Canadian aerospace industry, it continues to punch above its weight. As new and expanded uses of satellites are constantly being imagined and developed, who knows what will come next? As many in the space world like to say, the sky is not the limit.